Hey everyone, JJ here with another medical lesson for you. In today's lesson, I'm going to talk to you guys about the polyol pathway, or otherwise known as the sorbitol pathway. And in this lesson, I'm going to tell you guys what the polyol pathway is, what the function of the polyol pathway is, and why the polyol pathway is so important in diabetes pathogenesis. So to get started, what does the polyol pathway actually do? So what it does is it actually takes a glucose and it actually converts glucose to sorbitol within the cell and it actually does this by utilizing the enzyme aldose reductase and um, in order to actually convert glucose to sorbitol aldose reductase requires NADPH um, and it actually oxidizes NADPH to NADP plus so that means that in order to have NADPH we need an active um, pentose phosphate pathway and this is where majority of uh, the NADPH is formed so once the cell has sorbitol, what it will do is it will actually convert the sorbitol to fructose by the enzyme sorbitol dehydrogenase. Now it does this by actually um, utilizing NAD+, and it reduces NAD+, to NADH. So you're actually uh, acquiring an NADH out of this reaction, and you're also getting fructose. So a couple very important points about this pathway. Uh, it's only, re only actually... Uh, activated when you have high levels or high concentrations of glucose. So in fact, high concentrations of glucose are required to activate the aldose reductase enzyme. And that's because aldose reductase has a high michaelis mentin constant and thus it has a low affinity for glucose. So that is why a cell typically needs high levels of glucose for this reaction to occur. And this pathway is very important um, for fructose production. That's, that's the main function of this pathway is to take glucose and make it into fructose and that's the, it's very important in spermatocytes as spermatocytes utilize fructose as their main energy source. However, um, in other tissues, uh, sorbitol, um, sorbitol production can have adverse effects and one of the reasons is because sorbitol has significant osmotic effects. It has the ability to absorb fluid so it will actually can cause a lot of damage when you have sorbitol accumulation in tissues. So that brings us to the problem. If there are tissues with decreased um, sorbitol dehydrogenase content or activity they will have problems processing the sorbitol if it is produced and in fact one area of the body that's very susceptible to this is actually the retina and lens of the eye. The retina in the lens of the eye has very low sorbitol dehydrogenase activity and this can actually lead to diabetic retinopathy. So in, during diabetes we all know that we have high uh, concentration of glucose which can lead to an, uh, an increase in sorbitol production but because the retina in the lens of the eye has a decreased uh, activity of sorbitol dehydrogenase it cannot rid, uh, it cannot actually convert that sorbitol into fructose which means that it, the, the sorbitol actually accumulates uh, and because it has a significant osmotic effect it can lead to damage of the retina and lens of the eye. Now another part of the body um, that has very low sorbitol dehydrogenase activity is the kidney and now as we uh, as we can see this is the reason why we get diabetic nephropathy as well because again during diabetes the high glucose causes an increased uh, production of sorbitol but we cannot convert that sorbitol into fructose properly and it'll actually cause damage to the kidney as well. And another part of the body that has very low sorbitol dehydrogenase activity are the nerves of the body and this is why we actually see uh, diabetic neuropathy during diabetes and again this is because the nerves have very low sorbitol dehydrogenase activity and cannot actually convert um, sorbitol into fructose to compensate for the accumulation of sorbitol during diabetes. Anyways guys that was a quick lesson on the polio pathway and the clinical relevance of the polio pathway in diabetes. Um, if you guys can understand this pathway you'll understand a lot of what happens during diabetes and the, some of the pathogenesis of uh, diabetes on certain target tissues. Anyways guys, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe for more videos like this one. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.